Today, specifically, what I wanted to talk to you are, are four mistakes that people make when they're looking to get solar and how to rectify them. So number one, what people end up doing is they don't end up doing the research on the contract. Once you sign with a company that's not reputable, you either are gonna end up overpaying for a product, you're gonna either get subpar product, or they're not gonna finish the job the way that they told you they were. So what do you do about it? Well, you can look up a company and see if they're BBB accredited. See if they're involved in the local community like the Chambers of Commerce or other community events. See if you can go meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, not once, but more than once. And lastly, if you know somebody that has gotten solar, ask them for references. Ask them who they've installed before and go and look them up. See what their reviews are. Now, another mistake that people end up making is not getting the system that is right for their homes. We're in Texas. It is 80 degrees in March, so what ends up happening is you need a larger system because you're gonna use a lot of electricity. They want a small system, they say, well, I'm gonna get rid of 20 or 30% of my electricity consumption right now, and then I'm gonna change it later. What ends up happening is now you've got the overhead multiple amount of times. So you get the best value for your dollar when the crew is there, because crew is very expensive for any company. So when the crew is there, it probably takes them almost the same amount of time to put up 20 panels, as it does for them to put up 40 panels. Now on the other hand, I talk with people and they want large systems where they're overproducing their consumption. When I ask them, I'm like, well, why would you wanna do that? They'll tell me, well, I just wanna sell it back to the electric company. Now, even if your electric company buys back, how do you know they're gonna buy back for the next five, 10, 15, or 20 years, right? Eventually, your usage is gonna catch up to that consumption and that may be a wise strategy, but for today's dollars, it may not make sense. Most of our customers, they get rid of 70 to 90% of their consumption, and that's a good system size. That means your electric bill is almost gone. That also means that you're not overproducing, yet you're still on the grid. Now, the third thing that we run into, the third mistake that people make is paying for things they don't need. You've got a smooth talking salesperson that comes to your house, and he's gonna come tell you, he's gonna say, look, you're using 25,000 kilowatt hours right now, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a small solar system, and what I'm going to do with that small solar system is, I'm gonna make sure your home is energy efficient. So I'm gonna do this, you know, that's gonna reduce 5%, I'm gonna do the other thing that's gonna reduce 10%, I'm gonna do this third thing that's gonna reduce 30% of your consumption, and the next thing you know, this very small system, it's going to offset 70 or 80% of your consumption. Now again, with snake oil salespeople, you get what you pay for. What you wanna ask is, do I need all of these? Can I downgrade and save uh, the difference between a string inverter and a microinverter can be thousands of dollars. So if they're quoting you at a microinverter level and you don't need a microinverter, well maybe you can save a few thousand dollars just by downgrading and getting a string inverter. And now the fourth thing is with solar, there's a lot of money on the table from either the federal government or your electricity company or even the Department of Agriculture. For example, for every dollar that you spend on renewable energy, you get 30 cents back on your taxes. That's a federal income tax credit. It's not a write-off, it's not depreciation, it's a dollar for dollar credit on your taxes. So instead of paying Uncle Sam 30 cents, you get to get renewable energy for 30 cents. There's a lot of electric providers that give rebates. Farmers Electric here locally gives $1,000, CoServe gives $2,600, Encore gives $6,500 or somewhere around there, but that money is on the table and it's for you to use to help with this project. And then lastly, there's a lot of different rebates that your contractor may not apply for because it's a lot of paperwork. Based on areas, you might qualify for USDA. Now, a lot of people don't do it, again, because it takes a lot of work, but it takes thousands of dollars off of your cost to get solar. So to summarize, here are the four mistakes and how to avoid them. Number one, People don't find the right contractor. So do your research and make sure your contractor is locally involved in local events and is also accredited and has a lot of references. Mistake number two, not getting the right system size. So make sure you get the proper system size. You get your usage history for the last 12 months and then put a system in place that is the right investment for your home and your family. Mistake number three, is paying for things that you don't need. Getting upgrades that are really not needed or necessary and wasting money in that sense. Mistake number four is not getting every penny that is possible from rebates and grants and incentives that are available in your area. And all four of those mistakes, if you do it right, is really gonna lead to the thing that you're looking for in solar, which is getting the right investment number. So if you don't make any of those mistakes, your return on investment will be double digit and you're gonna be very happy with your investment. Remember, at One Solar Solution, we believe going green matters. The one message that I wanna make sure that anybody watching this gets is 
when you're looking to get a solar install. So we've talked about four things that you don't do. Let's talk about the one thing that you do. That is to make sure you're getting a good return on investment. So you want to check your break-even point. You want to check your warranties against those break-even points. And then you want to get a good return on investment. Now, when you're looking at ROI, you've got to have something to compare it to. So S&P 500 has averaged 10% over the last 100 years. So year over year, some years it was less, some years it was more. If you're looking for more stable, you can go to bonds, market, or savings, and that's under 5%. All of our customers, whether they're residential or commercial, end up getting close to 15% return on investment year over year over year. So you want to make sure that you're getting a good ROI. You're making a solid investment in your home. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be in your home for a long time, and we want to make sure that you love the upgrade that you're getting.